Okay, we're going to paint this in like four sub-assemblies. We're going to do the uh, upper hull, the lower hull, the accessories like the baskets and stuff, and the turret. I'm going to start with the upper hull. I've got it sitting on a Lazy Susan. Uh, one important thing is to make sure you got plenty of light. Now we're doing a three color camouflage job. We've got two colors of green and one of brown. So uh, the way I've always done it with aircraft is a with multiple color camouflage jobs is to start with the lightest color first and then work your way progressively through to the darkest color and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to start with the lighter of the two greens and then cover up what's going to stay green and then paint it brown and then cover up what's going to stay brown and then paint the dark green. So I've already got everything prepped. The uh, compressor is charged. The airbrush is ready to go. And I'm just going to give this entire lower hull a coat of the light green. Just like painting a little car. I'm just going to take like a quarter panel at a time and smooth continuous strokes overlapping each other just like painting a car. Run all the way off the end and before you release the uh, flow of paint. I'm probably running at about 14 to 16 pounds of air pressure. Try to keep it steady. Okay, once you get your base coat on the main uh, sub-assemblies, you just walk away for at least a day. I just put a light coat on everything and then just give it at least 24 hours before I do anything else with it. So we'll come back to this tomorrow and then we'll start masking up. I might do another coat tomorrow and not mask until the day after. That's just how it is. You just wait a whole day and then you can handle everything and check it out and see if you missed any place or if you got to repaint or if you're ready to proceed on. And that's where we're at now. So we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, this is immediately after removal of the masks, after the shooting of the last of the three colors. Um, there is more of a contrast to the brown and the dark green than I thought there would be. Once I attach the accessories, the basket and stuff like that, then I'll have to go back over all three colors with the airbrush and do the touch-up. There's, It doesn't seem like it's showing up in the video that much, but there are places like right up here on the light green I'm gonna to have to touch that up but that's just uh, especially like right there you can see that little I don't know what to call it it's like a notch right there that's from the uh, masking tape underneath the paper mask same over here you can see a little bit of bleed over of the brown onto the light green that kind of thing I can fix you know by hand with the airbrush it's kind of tedious but it's okay and I enjoy doing that kind of thing it came out too bad I've got to do something with those periscopes and I don't know what to do I'm gonna to turn to the guys on the forum for some advice there and also I found that with the metal sprockets with the larger uh, socket head cap screw that the Taijin gearboxes use the center cap won't fit over that so after looking at the center cap I determined that this is something that I'm gonna to have to take to work in order to do because as I was looking at it I don't know how well it'll show up here but uh, that hole is way off center if you can see the amount of material on the left side is much thicker than on the right side the, the hole is just way off center but it, the way this is designed I can just lightly chuck it in a vise on the bridge board like that and indicate around the outside diameter and then I'll just run down in there with an end mill probably a 5 16 which is 3 12 and that should leave me plenty of wall for grip and it should clear the socket head cap screw and I'll be able to attach those but that's not until next week when we go back to work so there is like I say, this is immediately after the removal of the mask and prior to the touch-up that will go on shortly. <laughs> and this is with the accessories attached before the final paint. 
Now I did hit the insides of the um, of the baskets when I before I you know put them on. Still a couple pieces yet to go on. These have to be painted. I'm gonna paint those off and, and then install them. Okay, so now this is right before the touch up. So it'll look different after the touch up and then it'll look a lot different again after the weathering. And I do have to open it up and modify the front cross base brace. Got interference with the uh, airsoft unit when the gun is fully elevated. Okay, this is just after the touch up on the light green, just the first color. We still got to do the brown and the dark green. Um, now, when you do this, it might look blotchy in some places, like right here. Now, that's partly because it's not fully cured. And it still might look a little blotchy after it is fully cured, but don't worry about that because the flat coat is going to make all of this stuff blend together really nice. Right now you just want to make sure you got the pigment where you want it. The final finish will uh, really change when we flat coat this. So there is all the light green touched up and I'll give this a little while to cure. And then I'll do the brown and then the dark green. And then we'll talk about markings and flat coating. Okay, paint's all done. She's had her first flat coat, so now she's ready for markings, and then a wash, and weathering, and a final flat coat. And I think it didn't come out too bad. Okay, here's the first part of the markings. I uh, got a couple of pictures from Paco of actual European Theater Abrams. And uh, for the number, the 61, I just printed it on paper. I printed a bunch of them because I figured I'd probably have to do a couple trial runs. And then with a brand new number 11 blade and a metal straight edge, uh, I took my time. It, it To cut that six probably took six minutes <laughs> it took a while but um that's masked in place i'll uh increase the area of mask and then i'll use the airbrush to put the number on there and then once that's done i'll do the uh stripe that goes above it i also have the decals made for the glacis I just took white decal paper and printed them out and uh, the photos that I have show that they painted a white square and then they stenciled the uh, numbers over the white square so there'll be one under this headlight with uh, that's uh, company platoon and tank number and on the other side it'll be marked for first armor division first of the 37th tank battalion because those are the guys that were across the street from me when I was at uh, the Ansbach army heliport at Kotterbach. There you go. Okay, uh, after airbrushing and before touch-up, you guys have probably noticed that uh, flat paint is great about that. You can you can touch it up really easy, make it, and then a, a nice clear coat over to make it all blend, and you can't even tell. Next will be the chevron. Okay, this is the barrel of my Abrams tank. For those of you not up on your Latin, uh, Angelus Mortis means angel of death. Right there on the barrel of the Abrams. Now, this is a new thing for me. I never tried these before. I've, I've always seen them, but the way I did this was with these. These are Woodland Scenics Dry Transfers. Okay, and this is what they look like when you take them out of the bag. Let me see if I can get a shot of this without spilling them all, because I've already cut it up. So anyway, they come in, in rows of letters. Let me show the other sheet that comes in the package. It's about $6 for the uh, 
dry transfers and these also come with it okay now they're very very easy to use you just stick it where you want it and uh, I've got a little tool these are great for burnishing okay it's just plastic this came out of one of those cheap manicure kits and uh, it works really great you just put it where you want it and rub it down and then peel away carefully and then when you're done you take the backing sheet that came with it and put it over and burnish everything down again and then give it a, a flat coat and that's what we've done here and I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it on the other side of the barrel or not it would have to you know run the other way I like this one I don't know we'll see and that's what the finished product looks like so there you go woodland scenics dry transfers good for all kind of stuff see you next time